Hey all, it's Bruce from Nature Calls, and this is the Hilleberg Una. It is a one-person tent from Hilleberg. It's their red label tent. Now, it's a one-person tent with no vestibules. Now, this really just sticking out like that is just how I've got it set right now. But it's a one-person tent that's extra wide, and I'm going to show you how that works later. But this tent is really designed for someone who doesn't have a lot of room to pitch it on, say on a ridge in the snow on a rocky surface, which we have a lot around here, where you just don't have the spots to stake things out. Because it's a freestanding tent, you can stake it out, but it's really designed for fast, easy, no gimmicks, straight out, freestanding tent. Uh, we did use it a couple weeks ago, uh, where we had to have two people in there and it worked just fine. But it's a red label tent, so that means it uses a Curlon 1200. And they have Curl on 1800 for their black label and Curl on 1000 for their yellow label. This is right in between. So this is where they take their expedition tents, their black label, and they try and make them a little lighter weight. But it's still real robust. Um, they use a little bit smaller diameter tent poles, smaller diameter lines, lighter weight stent, tent pegs, lighter weight fabric, zippers, all that. So it's still a very, very robust tent. I've seen some pretty incredible shots of this tent out in the snow. So this tent really intrigued me. You know, I never really thought about not having vestibules on my tent, so I really wanted to see how this worked. And I'm going to show you how I did that in a little bit. Um, that's a fantastic tent. It's Hilleberg. If you guys don't know everything about Hilleberg, they're one of the top ranked tents. Uh, so please go on their website and they'll even send you a piece of their fabric, which is already pre-cut. You can't tear it. Um, if you ever watch my videos, I do a ton with building equipment. I use a ton with uh, different fabrics. So this fabric, I wish I could get it. It's so strong. And so what you get is the Una, all the stakes, all the poles, a spare pole, and a repair fat. The, everything I've got in my arms right now is 4 pounds, 17 ounces. And to me, for the highest and best use, where these types of tents are going to be used, like say on a on a ridge, in the snow, in the rain, in high wind, just by design, I would say this is a lightweight tent. I know I'm going to get a lot of, you know, I get some people that want to debate the whole lightweight thing, but highest and best use. I'm not going to take one of my really lightweight tents out in storm, and wind, and snow. I would take something like this, and this would be, I would consider lightweight. So let's do some setup. Now it's really cool, and I know especially the Hilleberg tents, is to understand how tent designers make it so it's easier to build your tent, say in adverse conditions. Now I'm going to just make believe that the wind's coming from my back that direction. What Hilleberg does is they, they design it so setting up the tent is going to be the easiest way possible with the wind effect and and uh, keeping you protected and making it easy. So on this end, this is where the wind's coming from my back. So you want to stake it out, at least one. You can stake them out both. They provide with this tent these really nice little um, lightweight aluminum DAC stakes. Um, of course, you can get different stakes and you should change your stake for what environment you're going into. They have snow stakes and sand stakes, stakes and you know, even more lightweight stakes. But this is a freestanding tent so you don't need that necessarily. But let's just make believe that there's a lot of wind coming from my back and uh, so we just stake this out. Now I'm going to go to the other end. I'm going to do all the rest of the setup down at that end other than staking. We'll go back and do staking later. Now the poles are the DAC, which is pretty much regarded as a top or the top pole maker in the tent industry. And these nice spearheading how these all these ferrules went together. But since this is a red label and they use the curl on 1200, another way to break down some of the weight because that's what they're trying to get that that spot, that sweet spot between total expedition tent and 
is lightweight tent they can make for harsh conditions. And that's what the red label is. So they do these nine millimeter poles. And you want to make sure they're all together real nice. So there's no, they're all tight. So that's where you're going to have your breakage. So that was the wind side and the wind's coming this way. So the tent would be flapping all over the place. Now I'm gonna, this is where I put in both tents down here and they have real nice sleeves. So you'd put your pole in the sleeve. The sleeves are a heavier duty fabric than the Curlon 1200. And you can put two poles in. Now in a storm, I could set it all up from this end. If it's not a storm, then you go to the other end and you, you pull your poles in nice and, and, and uh, try and of course maintain your tent integrity. Let me get the poles in, or get this one in. Now in this particular tent, and this is why you do uh, practice setups, found that the left pole is the one you want to put in first, because the right pole goes over the top of this one, and it's much harder to put in. So you put the left pole in first, and you get down to the end, they've got a little cup, you stick that in the cup, and you tighten the cup down so it's even with the tent. Of course, there's probably where you put full tents in, not tight. Um, personally, I like to put the pole in and then stretch it out and insert it and then go for the second pole. That's what just works for me. Yeah, so here's where. Let's go that way. This pole right right over the top of that one right there. I'll go ahead and pull this on through. It's got a little vinyl cup at the bottom. Make sure that's in all the way. I like to kind of make believe that I'm in a storm. This is how I would do it. There you have a freestanding tent. So here you might notice that we don't have a vestibule. This tent does not have a vestibule. So to decrease weight, no vestibule. To decrease complexity of setup, and say you're on a ridge where you don't have room to do the vestibule, this tent does not have a vestibule. So to add that extra cut ridge, they put uh, rain fly, but before I put the rain fly on, I want to show you this has a, a vent up here at the top. I'm going to bring the rain fly over, just hook it on. And tighten that down. That also helps give the tent some structural rigidity. All right, let's stake out some of the guy lines. We're getting there. Well, the guy lines that Hilleberg uses is really nice. In fact, I just love to have a whole bunch of this. It's a very tight woven. There's no cover on it. Uh, it doesn't absorb a lot of water. It's super strong and uh, it has grip all the time in the water. So to add their wind strength, see it has this double guy line, like most of the tents, really nice sturdy, and then you can put it at whatever angle you want. Stake it on out there. And you have these nice line locks. And you just want to tighten those up until they're firm. You don't want to deform the arch of the tent. So I'll go ahead and put all the guy lines up. Now dealing with condensation in any tent. So when you breathe, you breathe out a lot of moisture. And that builds up on the outer tent, which is waterproof. The inner tent is just has a, a DWR or durable water repellent finish on it. And so the, the moisture from your breath will come out. Now Hilleberg and these double wall tents design, that it hits that tent, then it runs down back into the ground. So how you handle that condensation is, Hilleberg works a ton on that. Now in this particular tent, and you can stake out the bottom, but if you really have an issue, you can clip up the bottom like this, and now you're getting even more ventilation under your tent. 
and I'll show you some more things when we go to uh, to the front side. There you go, you got a lot of ventilation and you got a lot of protection. So right here we have the same the same situation. Let's go ahead and open her on up. Roll it back. Get nice bungee. So here you have where you can see the inner tent and the outer tent and how much space we have on it. So like right now it's raining, this is a great time to show this. Since it doesn't have a vestibule, what you should really get used to and get used to with all these double wall, especially Hillebird tents, is how to make the inside bigger. And you can take the whole inner out or you can get the bug net inner or, like in this case, you just unhook, unhook, and unhook. And now, if it's really crappy, your gear's all wet and nasty, you just create an inner space, plus you still have plenty of room to sleep in the inner tent. So, if you have two people, no. But one person, this is a one person tent, possibly two, you can always do this scenario. And that's something you should get used to with all the Hilleberg tents is how to quickly and easily adjust the inside by taking the inner tent and doing something with it. And there we go, we just instantly make a nice space. Still got plenty of space to sleep. So just hook this all back up. So like it was pouring rain, I could take out the inner while I'm inside the tent and then pack that inside my backpack, <clears throat> keep it dry, and then when I've got everything all packed away, then come out and I could take down the tent and stick it in the back of my backpack. So if it was just really torrential rain, I could, I could do that if I wanted to. So very cool. Now let's go ahead and take this off. Make sure this is open. All the way. Now we can take the whole thing. It's really hot. And open up the whole tent. So now you can see the whole thing. So this is the the normal inner. In this, in a four season tent, this is what you'll see. In a three season tent, you'll see this is all bug screen, bug netting. Nice. Uh, bathtub floor. It's a great bathtub floor. It's a little higher in denier than the, than the outer, so it will last a ton. I don't use footprints. Um, if I ever did get a leak in the bottom, I could just tape it up because it's going to last a long, long time. Let's go ahead and get inside. Here we go. I'm six foot tall. Um, we do have a tab that's needed right here to pull this up, but I can sit up completely straight in here, no problem. And since it is a kind of a one and three quarter wide, maybe you could call it, and you could fit two people in, and we did a couple weekends ago, we did have two people in here. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where it's great if you suddenly need to house two people, which we did two weekends ago, this tent uh, could, could do it. So. I'm six feet tall, got plenty of room. Most of these tents are designed after one of the Hillebergs who's, who's over six feet tall. So, now, I'll show you, there's a pocket right there. So now, if I just want ventilation, I can open up this top and with this rain fly, I can get ventilation coming in here. Let's say I want ventilation, but there's bugs, then they have the bug net top.
top up here so I can open this up with the bug net. Now, in three season, you might want to get the bug net interior. In four season, where you've got splashing rain and snow buildup, you want to have this, this um, inner tent that's fabric. All right, so there's the Hillebrook Una. I hope uh, that gave you some idea of what this tent is. It's, I think it's very unique, especially in the Hillebrook line, but just, just the design, I just had to try it out. And uh, it really got me thinking about how to get the inner out. But, you know, I know I've seen lots of pictures in some pretty harsh conditions with this tent being used, and I totally understand why someone would choose this tent. So, hope you give it a shot, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you out on the trail. Bye now.